Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hi there folks and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We have a great show today. Dr. Bob Larson is going to be joining me. We're going to talk about taking care of that neonatal calf when it's born. It's something that's calving season's right around the corner and it's going to be a great show so I hope you stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer for more information visit cowsprayer.com bob welcome to doc talk it's good to be here dr dan <laughs> well it's always good to have you here uh, to introduce you folks to dr larson dr larson is the jones chair of production medicine here at kansas state university and he is um you know you're you're a full professor yep and you are in the clinical sciences. What are some of the things that you enjoy doing? Well, I, I get the opportunity to teach veterinary students and I enjoy that a lot. We also do a lot of research work with uh, cattle, looking at ways to improve health and profitability of beef cattle production. Well, always good to have you on the show, always good to have topics with you, and this is one that you're pretty familiar with, and that's uh, taking care of these baby calves when they hit the ground. That's right. I think. Cattlemen know that this, the first two to three weeks of life is really critical for our calf's health. Uh, we, we know that the greatest risk of death for a calf is during those first two to three weeks of life. So mm -hmm. this is a time frame when we should really concentrate on the calves, the environment they're in, and doing all we can to make sure that they get off to a good healthy start. Yep. Couldn't agree more. And, and uh, you know, as we were talking about this, the first thing we're going to talk about is when that calf's born. Yeah and, and the, all the things surrounding that, that ordeal and preventing dystocia. Yeah, the, well, the first couple of hours are critical, and they're critical for a couple of reasons. One is dystocia is uh, it's the veterinary word for calving difficulty. So a, a difficult birth takes the cow a long time to have this calf. He can have a number of problems with that. One is just uh, he's, he's exhausted. Mm -hmm. The dam is exhausted. The cow is exhausted. Uh, also, there, you know, it can be a long enough process that his, his tongue is swollen, it has difficult suckling, all those kinds of things. And just if, he's, if it takes long enough or if the, if the calving is difficult enough, it, it can actually kill him in just the calving process. So dystocia can end up in death itself. Or the other problem is even if they live, they're not likely to get up and suckle very soon. Colostrum, getting that early milk into the calf is critical and the way that I am most certain to get that colostrum into the calf is if the calf is born easily, turns around, jumps up, his mom's already standing, and he starts suckling. If that happens, he's likely to drink all the colostrum that he needs. Right. If either be he or the cow is laying on the ground for a prolonged period of time because of calving difficulty, we're not going to get up and start suckling when I want them to. So then we probably need to intervene with some colostrum or something of that. Yep, help him along. Dystocia fatigue. That's right. It can't be good. No. And, and so when we're sitting there looking at the fatigue and, and the fatigue calf, uh, when you use colostrum, do you use, do you, do you use a, a bag feeder? Or, uh... I, I prefer to use frozen or, or fresh cow colostrum. Right. That's not always easy to get. So right. if I can, I will use colostrum right from the cow. Um, if I can't get that, like milk out that calf's mother yep. or another cow in the herd, I will use uh, a powdered colostrum or something like that if I need to. Perfect. Thanks for being here today. And thank you for joining us. When we come back from the break, more with Dr. Larson on Take Care of That Baby Calf. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. 
This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Lee Michaels is a student at the University of Minnesota College of Veterinary Medicine. He recently received the Merck Animal Health Student Recognition Award. Raised on a dairy in Wisconsin, Lee developed a passion for dairy production, and at school he spent much of his time working with the Production Animal Medicine Club. Upon graduation, he hopes to practice in a rural Midwest community. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm joined by Dr. Bob Larson and Dr. Larson is Jones Chair here in Production Medicine at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're talking about taking care of the neonatal or newly born calf. We talked about dystocia and calving difficulties in colostrum. The next thing is keeping them warm. Yeah, as when we calve in the winter time or spring, uh, one of the real concerns is just getting too cold and not again not getting off to a good start obviously they're born wet right and so they need to dry off and and get their body temperature up pretty early one of the things that that I worry about is particularly in a you know calves that are born in a in a real cold spell or a snowstorm or something like that I think it's wise to carry a thermometer around and they need to get their body temperature up above 100 degrees real quickly any calf that is on the ground and not able to really respond like I want him to, um, take a body temperature, and if it's below 100 degrees, we're going to intervene. Intervene, maybe bring him into the cab of the pickup truck and warm him up, maybe take him to the house or a barn and warm him up, but I'm going to get that calf warmed up as soon as possible. Um, we Oftentimes you think about snowstorms, cold weather, that kind of thing causing low body temperatures. The other one that can do it is a little bit later in the spring when we get some cool spring rains. Yeah. If it gets wet and stays wet, um, again, related to the dystocia, if he doesn't get up and get a belly full of warm milk, uh, those can start to be a real series of problems that are going to cause his body temperature to drop. So my, my rule of thumb is really that they need to get that body temperature up. During cold snaps, it's a good idea for the, for the cowboy and the, and the rancher to have a thermometer and just check those calves and be ready to get them warmed up if they need it. Great ideas, and you put them in the cab of the pickup, make sure the cow doesn't follow you come. in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. uh, and the other thing is that, you know, we want to make sure that we tell people on a public health note, you know, if you take those calves 
indoors into your kitchen or into your bathtub that you know we can be bringing E. coli or salmonella into the house and exactly. if you have young kids or elderly people living there be really careful. Yeah. Remember that a few of the organisms that cause diarrhea in calves can also cause diarrhea in humans so yeah we, we want to keep those separate from food and water and wash our hands and all of those types of activities. Yeah. Well speaking of uh, sanitation and <laughs> segregation yeah <laughs> kind of segues right into our next topic on on these calves and and so when when you mean sanitation and segregation to prevent uh, neonatal calf illness what are we talking about here well the um, again we talked about dystocia actually difficult birth is a big risk of dying mm -hmm. if they survive that the next biggest risk that we are concerned about in that first two to three weeks of life is diarrhea Right. Uh, scours or diarrhea and the way we really try to prevent that is try to have that calf in as clean an environment as possible so I, I know we're, we're talking about cattle that live outdoors <laughs> right. so we're not talking about a uh, hospital room clean but as clean as possible and so anything with a grass cover turf cover even you know when the grass is dormant that is what I'm really looking for get them out of the mud get them up where they can uh, really spread out and be as clean as possible by age segregation a young calf's worst enemy is a slightly older calf. So that calf that's in the first one to two weeks of life, the calf that's most likely to make him sick is the one that's three or four or five weeks of age. So I like to segregate pastures with just a couple of weeks worth of age group in each pasture so that, that they don't have older calves around them. Perfect. When we come back from the break, more with Dr. Bob Larson on taking care of baby calves. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Hey there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Are you BQA certified? Well, if you're not, you should be. If you're involved with the beef industry as a producer, FFA, 4-H, show cattle, whatever you do with the beef industry, you should be Beef Quality Assurance certified. And today, you can get it for free and you can do it at the comfort of your own home online. Go to the website listed below, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica and the Beef Quality Assurance Program at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Today's the day, it's your April 15th. Get BQA certified. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. True Test Group, Weighing Systems, Electronic Identification, EID, Electric Fencing, and Dairy Automation Systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey there, and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine, my guest, who is the Coleman Chair. Yeah, we got that right. Uh, yeah. Here at uh, Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine in the Department of Clinical Sciences, Dr. Bob Larson. And we were talking about, as we left the break, sanitation and segregation, which are very, very important to, to preventing calf scours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
Let's, let's elaborate a little bit more on, on different methods or different processes that ranchers and farmers employ. Well, one of the strategies that people have probably heard about if they've been reading some of the magazines the last few years is what's called the Sand Hills Method of Calving. Mm -hmm. And this was really developed by a group of, of uh, scientists up at the University of Nebraska. I got to give those guys credit. They came up with a pretty simple plan of trying to really improve the, the sanitation the calves are born in as well as keeping them away from older calves. And the strategy is basically to have the, the first two weeks of calving in one pasture. Right. And then any cow that has not calved in those first two weeks, she goes into a new pasture. So that as, as those calves are born, they basically kind of start the calving season over again in that, in that pasture and they're not around those older calves. And then if you can, the ideal is to move them every week. Move the ones that haven't calved. So in each pasture, you've got just one week's, one age, one week age spread in each pasture. That's the ideal, and I really like it when you can pull that off. Uh, I understand that takes a lot of pastures, and that may not be practical. I get that, again, this isn't exactly what the Nebraska data says, but I would say that if you can move at least every you know, two weeks, so that within a group, there's only two weeks of age spread from the youngest to the oldest, that does a lot to help us prevent diarrhea and scours in these young calves, just that they're not exposed to those older calves. Also by moving occasionally, uh, moving those pastures, we're getting, we're constantly moving new young calves, or, or they're going to be born, onto fairly uncontaminated pastures. Right. There haven't been other cows on there. So if you can do that, you really optimize both the cleanliness of the area where they're calving, and they're not around those older calves that can, can shed more germs and, and cause You kind of have both the sanitation and the segregation deal going on. Really there. fixed in the same strategy. And if you have two pastures, then do it in 30 days. I mean, yeah. you know, if you have two, you know, at least you're separating it at a point and maximizing the opportunity. Yeah. And not everybody can get it done, but... but uh, that, that's exactly right. If you're down to two, two pastures, then as soon as half the calves are born, start the next half on a new clean pasture. And so we always move, we move the heavies. We move the ones that are late in pregnancy away and so that they, that group can start calving in a brand new pasture as frequently as we can. Right. Every week if possible, whatever else we can accomplish so that they start on new clean pastures. Well, and it just makes, makes good sense. You know, typically we used to do it the other way around. We would yeah. kick the cow, we'd have our calving area and we'd kick the cows with their calves out into the pasture and leave them in the same environment. Right, and so this is, this is a better strategy compared to that. And then the other question is, well, how long do they have to stay apart? Well, by the time those calves are about six weeks of age, they're a lot tougher than they were during those first three weeks. So once they get to be about six weeks of age or so, I can put the whole group back together and you start cool. putting cows back together again as they go to summer grazing. Excellent. When we come back, more with Dr. Bob Larson on taking care of baby calves. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Are you BQA certified? If you work with beef cattle and you're not, you should be BQA certified. So if you work with beef cattle on day to day as a beef producer, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, whether you're working in an auction market, whether you're 4-H, FFA, or ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and it's something that you need to be familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it has been the cornerstone for education for producers about things such as antimicrobial residue avoidance, food safety, animal welfare, sustainability, castration, dehorning, and many different things. And today, this educational opportunity is not only available face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, but it can also be attained online through Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Berenger Engelheim Vet Medica. If you go to the website bivi-bqa.com, you can be registered and certified in Beef Quality Assurance at no cost between now and April 15th. Also, if you register and become certified between now and April 15th, you'll also be entered into a drawing to win a Yeti cooler and a barbecue package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's something that's been around for over three decades. It is the cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today.
must be a, a, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it has been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Bob Larson, who is the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And we've had a great discussion today about taking care of those baby calves when they hit the ground. And now we're going to kind of wrap up today's show by talking about healthy cows. Yeah. I, I think one of the ways to think about it, and I'm, it's not a surprise to anybody, but good healthy calves have healthy mothers. Right. And, and so by healthy mothers, what I mean is, is the herd as a whole has a good vaccination program. They, they have a feeding plan and a forage utilization plan where those cows stay in good body condition. They're not too thin. They're not too fat. Uh, they're dewormed when they should be to make sure that they're not carrying a heavy parasite load. And, and so I expect the best luck, and luck is usually what you make of it, but the best luck as far as calf health is when the cows are a good, healthy herd. All of the things that we talk about, nutrition, vaccination, sanitation on those, on those cows are, are top notch, and then we're much more likely to have uh, a good success with those calves as they're born. Working with your veterinarian, is just critical and and your nutritionist to making sure you have optimum health optimum nutrition and 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 part of the key of that is that you're thinking about these things weeks and months ahead of the big big uh stress times as, as i said that right. the time frame when calves are at most risk of dying is those first one to three weeks of age so we don't want to start thinking about that when we're one week away from calving Right. We want to think about that when we're weeks and months ahead so we can really put things in place. We can get our calving pastures set up. We can, we can do any uh, scraping of, of dry lots that we need to, to prepare them. We can have our cows in good body condition heading into calving. The vaccinations are done. So prior planning prevents problems as we move into, uh, into calving. Yeah, and it's just, it's so critical to, and you know, it takes you five minutes walking on somebody's farm to tell who's planned and who hadn't. Yes, that that's almost always true. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'd like to have uh, be able to check boxes and do audits and assessments, but my my whether you walk into a school, a business, a farm, whatever, you know when one's being run right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So there's a lot of opportunities to get better. If you're really good at what you're doing, there's opportunities to get a little better. If you're struggling with some of the, the things we talked about, calf health, death loss in calves being higher than we want, cows that aren't in this body condition we want, there's things we can do and, and you can go get help. And that help, you know, I like to use that, that local veterinarian. He's, he and she is very knowledgeable about the things you want to do, extension, nutritionists. There's a lot of people that you can go to to get the information you need uh, to really improve the operation no matter where you are right now. Well, 
Great information today. Thank you very much for joining That's me. It's always good to be here. Yeah, it's always great to have you. If you want to know more about what Dr. Larson and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with the local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.